Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning. Uh, it's good to be here with you again as we gather remotely uh, to worship. And we hope that it won't be too long now before we can begin to gather once again in person. It's a, a pleasure to be able to share with you again. And our theme this morning is following the story of Peter walking on the water. And so I thought it would be good to come out and find some water. And so we're going to begin our worship with a prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, source of all blessing, help us to worship you with all our heart and mind and strength. For you alone are God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Holy God, to you alone belong glory, honour and praise. We join with the hosts of heaven as we worship. You alone are worthy of adoration from every mouth and every tongue shall sing your praise. You create the earth by your power. You save the human race in your mercy and renew it through your grace. To you, loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be all glory, honour and praise, now and forever. Loving God, we have sinned against you in what we have thought, said and done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and turn away from what is wrong. Forgive us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who came into this world to save sinners. And even as we pray, we remember his gracious word when he says to us, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so we join our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I suppose if you're a fisherman, then storms are a bit of an occupational hazard. But this one was quite a nasty one by the sounds of it, putting even seasoned fishermen in fear of their lives. Now, I won't claim any huge experience in this, but I was once caught out uh, on a boat in a storm. We were coming back from the Isle of Man and it was blowing an absolute hoolie. And I'm not keen to repeat the experience. It was very uncomfortable. And that was on a much bigger boat than the fishermen would have been in in Galilee. And so there they were, in fear of their lives, clinging on for dear life. And the one thing they wanted to do was stay in the boat. I don't think they had any ideas of leaving it. And yet it was at that point that Jesus came to them, walking across the water. There, in the moment, but also outside the moment, with them in the storm, but not caught up in the storm. Peter always was the hot-headed one. And so he was the one who, in the middle of this wind and waves, jumps out of the boat and begins to walk across the water towards Jesus. And he's fine. As long as he has no doubts, as long as he keeps looking at Jesus, he's fine. But then something happens. Maybe a, a particularly big wave catches the corner of his eye and distracts him. And suddenly he stops looking at Jesus and starts looking at the storm around him. And he begins to sink. But Jesus reaches out to him and brings him back to safety. Once again, focused on him. It's a funny little story really, I suppose. And yet, when I was reading it, somehow in this pandemic situation that we're in, 
it spoke to me in a completely new and different way. Suddenly, I felt what it was like to be caught up in the middle of a spiritual storm. When the world around us is, is tossing and turning, and we're not quite sure what's coming next. And you know, there's a temptation when we're in a storm like that to cling to the familiar. Maybe for us, our buildings were our fishing boat. The place where we felt at least more secure. And so to suddenly find ourselves outside of those buildings was a shock. And I think at first we weren't quite sure what to do. But I think the answer for us has been the same as it was for Peter. That as long as we keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus, as long as we focus and continue to move in his direction, then we're fine. And it's been wonderful to continue church through things like this, viral church, through the printed services that we've been sending out, through the wonderful generosity of people and the kindness as they've kept in touch with some of our more vulnerable members. As they have effectively kept the church going, even though the building has been missing. So what's going to happen next? Now that we've been given the all clear to go back into our churches, are we just going to be the same for our experience? Or are we going to be changed? And what differences will it make? I sincerely hope that we're a different church, that we've learned lessons from this difficult time. I'm sure that following his excursion onto the waves, Peter was never quite the same again. And I hope that the same will be true of, of us as we find new ways to reach out to people. As we look at the experiences of the last three months or so and start to reinvent and reimagine what it actually means to be church. But most of all, I hope that even now we're back in the boat, that we will continue to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus and to continue to move towards him. Amen.
And so we come to our time of prayer for others and for ourselves. Let us pray. God our Father, grant us the help of your Spirit in our prayers for the salvation of all people. We pray for the Church throughout the world, for the Churches in this circuit and district, as we work out a plan to come together once again in our buildings with all the regulations and safety procedures that we will have to follow. Give us wisdom and guidance that in faith and unity we may be constantly renewed by your Holy Spirit for mission and for service. We pray for the peoples of the world, for the leaders of nations, those who have authority and make decisions. We pray especially for the leaders of our nation as they guide us through this difficult time. May they always have the good of the people in their hearts and may they see the way forward to bring us through this crisis safely and securely. We pray for those among whom we live and work, for all our neighbours, for those who are vulnerable, for those who are still afraid and struggling with the coronavirus unsure as to whether they can go out. We pray especially for those who have been shielding, who are still now making their first steps into the world. We pray for all in sorrow, need, anxiety or sickness. We pray especially for those who have been scarred by this virus, who have lost family members, who are living with the after effects of the virus, whose livelihoods are lost or in doubt because of the economic impact. We pray that in their troubles, they may know your strength and that in their despair, they may find hope in you. In you, Father, we are one family on earth and in heaven. We remember in your presence all who have died, giving thanks especially for those who have revealed to us your grace in Christ. Help us to follow the example of your saints in light and bring us with them to the fullness of your eternal joy, because we ask it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us again this morning. Remember, if this has been a, a blessing to you, please give us a, a like on our YouTube page. And if you want to know when new services go up, then follow the page and click the bell icon to be told when new material is going up. But now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forever. Amen. <laughs>